Good. We're expecting some a lot of winds coming this afternoon. Let's hope we can get you a good day, you know. I'm getting guided. We actually had a frothing bass blitz there. The problem was they weren't hooking the fish. This is where the aggression starts. Total combat fishing. There he is. That's strong fish, these Albies, aren't they? Unbelievable. Holy smokes. He's on the fly. He's on the fly. Josh, yeah, baby, get in it. You ever seen anything like this before in your life? No, it's crazy. They definitely saw the magic of Montauk. There are five of us. We're professional fishing guides. We all live in the same house. We are fishing Montauk's fall run. It's blitzing bass, bluefish, and false albacore. It's making sure we catch big fish for high profile clients. The pressure is intense. Come join us at the guide house. It's probably coming later, so we should get the warning in anyway. Yeah, that's not good. Today I left early to go fishing uh, because it's supposed to be really bad weather this afternoon, or potentially really bad weather. The anglers that come out this time of year tend to be really fired up, and they want to squeeze in every possible second of fishing. So with a heavy wind forecast for the afternoon, I wanted to make sure my guys got as much time out there as possible. All right, well, keep in touch if it's really going. Click yeah, four right. times. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> if it's really going, I'll never hear from you. you Give us a call report before, before we set off at eight. Fishing guides are normally super competitive. Ordinarily, we keep the fish we find to ourselves. But having a group of friends is really crucial to making it as a fishing guide. There's just too much water for one boat to cover. Gas is a big part of the whole expense, you know. I mean, if I, these motors will do anything between two and a half and three and a half uh, miles to a gallon. I put in about 50 gallons a time. Um, my, my tank will load 150 gallons, but, but you ultimately lose, you use less fuel because if I put 150 gallons in, that extra 100 gallons is, you know, seven or 800 pounds or whatever it is. You know, you're running with more load on, so you're actually running more gas. So I, I like to put in about 50 a time. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so that's two days gas. That's uh, $209.75. So, you know, it's uh, expensive business <laughs> running these boats. What kind of leader are you fishing with? I'm going to do like a 30 to 20. I've been to just doing yeah. like straight 20. <laughs> yeah, I know. I it's like three feet of straight 20. IDFA, what? What? what are we talking about? Today, my clients were Jason, Bruce, and Keith. They're really fun guys who fish with me a lot. <laughs> Having three guys in a boat can be nuts, and I'm always prepared for anything. Boss. We met about seven, or we agreed to meet at seven, but they showed up late. They were out drinking the night before. What's up? Getting me all laced up. I am. I'm putting a leader on you. You're leaderless. Yeah. Today, these guys seem like they're really, really, really fired up about catching some anything. So where are you guys from? Cleveland, right? Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah? Do you come in just to fish here today? Specifically yeah. just fish here. Good. The guys I took out today said, said, you know, he said they've been looking forward to this. They booked me about five or six months ago and they've been phoning me up every week with, you know, asking about what lines to use and this, that and the other. So they were really building themselves up. So I was, I was very anxious to put them on a good day. This is something we've always wanted to do and this is our salmon time of year, steelhead time of year. and. Uh, we decided we'd do enough of that, so uh, yeah. let's give this a shot. And, and well, let's hope we can get you a good day, you know. You know, Mark and Lee are both really good anglers with lots of experience. Okay, wait till I get round to give you both a downwind shot. Okay, right in there. Lee's actually a tournament cast, so I can probably hit a dinner plate at 100 feet. There he is. Uh, let him run, let him run. He goes, there he goes. They're strong fish, these Albies, aren't they? Unbelievable. At least I'm into my fly line again. Oh, came off. Oh, well, never mind. The day started not well. We had a couple of early Albies, which he popped right at the boat. It's good fun, though, isn't it? They're spectacular. 
So then I made a decision to leave the Albies and go and look for bass, um, which I, I thought had, you know, an hour or two later, I think was the wrong decision. I haven't hooked anything yet, but that's going to change eventually. And uh, just having a great time being out here. Um, wish I could do it every day. And I thought, well, maybe I should have stayed, because it's all a roll of the dice, you know, when you do that. Uh, maybe I should have stayed on the Albies. You know, not finding any uh, bass at first on the south side was, was going to be an awkward situation. Side, uh, but all the same, I decided to stick to my plan and wait for the bass to come up. Uh, but I was definitely starting to worry about Mark and Lee's chances uh, to get on some decent strikers. Let's have, a, let's have a look around, see what we got. These guys, I've fished them before. They're great guys. Josh and John Coleman, they're brothers, and one's a... Uh, One's an attorney and one's a, an anesthesiologist, so you know their parents are proud. This is run and gun fishing. This is getting on the fish ASAP because you haven't seen boats together until you've been to Montauk. <laughs> really? Dude, we, we will be close. in the surf <laughs> with this boat. <laughs> Which I guess is why you pointed out the handrails. That's why I point out the handrails. <laughs> the day definitely didn't start off so good. Um, I had originally said it'd probably be about 8, but when I gave him an email, I said, how about 7.30? Based on the tide, based on the fog, based on where the fish have been, I thought an early start, you know, early bird gets the worm type thing, we'd get out and some of those bass blitzes over by ditch plains in town early. I think they misjudged traffic or they missed something out, but uh, anyway, um, they showed up at about quarter of 10. Well, we're getting a little bit of a late start, which, you know, isn't necessarily bad. It, it's just um, we're expecting some a lot of wind coming this afternoon. So if the wind held out, it, it, it's fine. It's no big deal. We went all the way to town, you know, whatever that is, the 20 miles uh, to make the run down there. And of course, we missed all of the bass that, that had happened that morning. This week, the slack tides are midday, and fish never come up on a slack tide. So if this weather forecast is correct, we could be forced in before the tide turns this afternoon we could get skunked because of our late start. Bass in here. It's all bass. We actually had a frothing bass blitz there. The problem was they weren't hooking the fish. Miller's nuts. Watch this. This ought to be good. Hang on, hang on. Uh, he's running all over him, and he's in the beach. Total combat fishing. I'm getting guided. I never, ever let anybody drive the boat. I'm such a control freak. <laughs> what the hell are you doing, lady? 